de uma escola de prevalência em Vila Nova de Sabena. I'm studying, uh, I'm finishing my master thesis on, uh, on agent based modeling in architecture and urban spaces. Uh, where I study generative process uh, for remembering that architecture. So, uh, this study focuses on developing new tools, on understanding the processes of uh, conceiving and perceiving emergent qualities of space by means of agent based modeling using a graphic user interface as a portal to a simulation environment, being able to run either social, uh, social simulations or form explorations. Uh, Agent-based modeling is, is used as a method to generate complex networks, interactions, network interactions and connections in single systems to make it possible to visualize emerging patterns as well as unexpected changes and events that uh, otherwise could be too intricate to perceive uh, in our city. So. Uh, it also acts as a tool of exploration, as well as a tool for search and simulation, as I said before. <coughs> so, the, the application I'm developing is based on a, a graphic user interface that, uh, that um, uh, and a graphic user interface for, for agent based modeling uh, within a, a simulation environment. <coughs> so, this simulation environment can be either uh, a social simulation or um, form, explore, form exploration. So, uh, that is defined by the user. So, <coughs> in the end, it's it's a graphic user interface for agent-based modeling through either a social simulation environment or a form exploration environment. Agent-based modeling is at the core of this work as emergence of complex architectural systems sets its background. So the, this type of method has been used for decades in several fields. Uh, analyze all, all kinds of complex data from weather forecasts to pharmaceutical purposes and the main other. Nowadays it's being used in the field of architecture and, and may change the way we perceive and generate our cities or at least part of our cities. Being the basic and the most essential unit of agent-based model, models, the concept of, uh, of what an agent should first be defined and understood. So in an agent is uh, an abstract, uh, an abstract di digital entity that moves in a virtual space following a specific set of rules. Uh, these rules are related and connected and shared with other agents uh, called neighbors, uh, as well as with other environment uh, components that are around them. So, uh, the, the behaviors and interactions uh, connected allow for a dynamic closed system uh, to be formulated. An agent is a point in a three-dimensional space. One can imagine a point in a three-dimensional space. A uh, dynamic point, so it's a point that moves in a three-dimensional space. So one can think of it as a single point, so throughout the traveling agency through space in a straight direction. So how does the point move? It moves in a straight line in a, in, a, in a specific direction. So where does it go? So where does it move to? 
And how fast does it move? These are our questions that will be answered after we explain the rules that will be implemented. And final one, does it ever stop moving? Uh, the most intricate things about agents is how, is how they behave with their neighbors and their environment. So um, let's imagine, for example, a, a system, a multi-agent system with several agents. Uh, so let's imagine uh, 500 agents inside a box with a random velocity um, in a random direction. Actually, the velocity will be one that's irrelevant in a random direction. So as time goes by, they start moving randomly through the space you created. <coughs> um, if you can visualize this in a, in a it's like a pretty bo a, a box actually. So points are actually not having any kind of rules. They are just randomly moving through space. So with no rules, uh, they're just points inside the virtual space with no awareness. So they're not talking to each other, they're not talking to anything around them. So our set of points uh, can see what's around them, right? So a set of rules will be applied to these points. Uh, the, the kind of rules that we can implement on this type of systems or, or in this type of agents are, are endless. Like uh, we can apply uh, according to our needs to simulate a specific kind of simulation. But the, the ones that are most commonly used are uh, as follows uh, separation, collision, alignment, and not wonder. So, Agents are also commonly known as bots. This was the name given to these virtual entities in a, to replicate how animals behave, specifically the uh, bird fox. And um, it was first implemented in a simulation by Craig Reynolds in the late 80s. And uh, he implemented several rules. These are just the most uh, important ones, the most commonly used. So, if you imagine, go back to our box where we have our 5,500 agents. Uh, we can see that they're moving randomly, right? So, if we add uh, this first rule, separation, uh, allows the agents to keep some distance be between each other. So. If an agent reaches some, some threshold of an one, some distance, some radius, uh, it separates from, from the other one. So a force is applied to each agent in the opposite direction. Uh, collision makes exactly the opposite. So makes the agents attract to each other. If they're close enough, so they attract each other. Alignment makes... Uh, makes the, them to, to uh, make their velocities very similar. So they copy kind of each other's directions. So they can move as a group, not instead of as individuals. And the last one, it's the most different one from the others. So it's a rule that, uh, that makes agents explore in, the, in, the, in a random manner their environment when they're not seeing each other or they're not seeing anything. So they start one, but they, they start searching. So this, uh, this separation rule is uh, it's what I explained in a graphic way. So we can see that when it gets close to any of the others within a certain <laughs> radius, it moves away from either from the, the three neighbors that you see, or two neighbors, or a group of neighbors. So it makes an average uh, vector. So the force is applied in the opposite direction. The same goes for collision. So that's self-explanatory. 
uh, alignment, as I said, the agents try to align themselves and get to the same kind of direction. So uh, this can be perceived as a more fluid movement. So it's implemented in that way, so they can have a more natural uh, way of moving. And wonder that uh, it's based on a. There are several uh, algorithms for for this type of group, but basically it's just an agent upgrading his direction, his velocity, and his uh, speed, uh, his movement, um, his position, um, in a random way. But always take into account the steps that he, he did before. So it's not completely random. It's, it has a radius. It shifts from, from a certain value. So it tries to randomly search where there could be something of interest. So if we go back to our virtual box, virtual box where we had our 100 points that that, were, that was not 100, it was 500. Uh, we can see that they negotiate their, their positions towards <coughs> stable individual positions, always following the rules that are implemented. In this example, we can see that the effects of our changes in the values of these rules. So these sliders are, are acting as uh, controllers for for this type of rules that I explained. And uh, we can see that uh, some rules are, are quite more, uh, some rules are, are better than others for some situations or for others, to, depending on the situation. So these fine adjustments will play a major role <coughs> when adapting this system to specific simulations, specific contexts. So, key question, uh, how can we take advantage of this agent-based modeling to, to be useful in the way we create our cities? Agent-based modeling was the method used in this work, as I said before, and um, the, these complex network interactions make it possible to vis visualize some uh, emergent properties, patterns, uh, and unexpected changes and events that otherwise would be too intricate to perceive and with the naked eye. Um, as our society and our cities, uh, our society and our cities are constantly shifting, so it's they're very time dependent as as the people that live in it. So. One should acknowledge simulations as complex dynamic systems and make a, an analogy and parallelism um, with a lot of variables, factors, and rules, and replicate them in a focused way to better understand some of these changes and why they are happening. So, question two Can we really simulate an act in an accurate manner the way people think and react? And, live, uh, and leave our cities? So this is a very important question. So the uh, short answer is no, at least not at the moment with the complexity that, that the human being has in his brain. So long answer, that's not an answer, that's actually a question, but uh, do we really want to, to recreate an actual action of virtual human uh, beings to sell the RC? Even if you put the number of variables, would be so huge and precise that uh, then exactly where we started. So looking at, at things with, with the naked eye without uh, any kind of filter. Uh, this process of simplifying reality in a simulation gives us access to a better understanding uh, with more clarity of whatever we are studying or simulating. So in other words, we make a, a filter of everything we don't find relevant and uh, we focus on what we think is important. It's important to think that this, this kind of uh, <coughs> simulation
relations, explorations are, um, are always relative to interpretation, are, are always sub subject to interpretation. So uh, that's also a key factor to try to uh, understand what we are replicating and what we are seeing. So the graphic user interface, it's what allows them it's um, okay. The graphic uh, user interface element on the developed application rests on top of the, the simulation environment, as we will I will explain later how that works, um, and act, act as a bridge, as a portal to uh, the simulation environment. So allows to make adjustments on the agent based parameters in order to prepare the system for a specific simulation. So, uh, allows to, to draw, uh, draw system components for agents to interact. Allows also to activate and control representation methods. I will explain all these steps later in the more graphic code. Uh, allows also to import uh, external geometry, so uh, urban plans and cartography, and also export the generated uh, geometry to, to make a post uh, use of the, the geometry. So the graphic user interface is pretty much like, um, like this. So we have a menu on top with all the functions that control uh, each specific Set 
then, then you can run the simulation and the simulation starts. So uh, this is the most basic structure. So as I said before, there were uh, some kind of uh, visual ways of perceiving how they <coughs> really move. So they're not just points <coughs> in, in a plane or in a cube or a box. So uh, here you can perceive how they move, how they react to our rules, as we've seen under the first video, and to control, actually control uh, the visual aspects of how they behave, so we can perceive and have a better understanding on um, on certain levels or certain types of what, whatever we want to, to explore. So this function is one of the most basic ones. It's uh, proximity relations. So when an agent reaches a certain threshold from another, so it creates a line between them. There are several others, like path tracing. It's called a, a trail. So an agent, when it's initialized, starts a trail, and it register, uh, registers all the, the positions that it came through with lines. So this one co it's called tail. It's pretty much the same, but you know, with points. That uh, fade away. Actually, this information of all the points that are created uh, is being stored in the computer memory. So we can access them. We can limit how much their points we have. That we can initialize it. And we can make use of this function. So this function is pretty much the same as the other one. But instead of doing it in the actual position of the agent, it's doing it in the previous position of the agent. So it's another way of uh, creating this kind of shapes and to perceive something that uh, we could. Uh, this will be better understood when I make the examples. When I explain the examples. So. This path this, uh, here controls all the agent-related uh, contents, so functions, variables. Um, so the next one is blocks. So let me just turn this off. OK. This one is blocks. This one, is, uh, this one allows for, um, for importing external geometry. So we can actually study on top of uh, a CT plan. So, I don't know where it is. I can't read it on this. Ah, okay. So, it reports everything that is a block, so a solid space, a solid. Because this type of simulations, when we we have a lot of points, it tends to get really heavy. So if I want them to react to blocks, uh, the simulation goes way slow. So it takes its time. This uh, this blocks. Uh, function acts uh, in parallel with this uh, roads fun function. So the the agents tend to not collide with each uh, block to all the blocks, and they tend to follow the roads. It's not completely rigid, but they have a tendency to follow the road. No, they do not always do that. But, uh, but the, the, the tendency is for them to use it. So 
I'll, I'll, uh, we've made a simulation with this, this plan, and now I'll show you the results later. So I'll continue to, to, to explain the rest. Uh, so there's, uh, there's these two components that were very important in this type of, uh, of, uh, of study in an urban scale. So we created this function that is like uh, an attraction, a positive place in a certain urban space. So we have the ability to position positive places. We can also import them from external geometry, but we can create them on the spot. And then we can create uh, deflectors, so basically ne negative spaces or negative points that will repulse the, the agents. So after the simulation like right, this uh, goes through uh, all the way, how they how they find those places really important or not. So we can analyze, make all types of analysis. So in the case that we studied the analysis of data, uh, this is actually the bridge that uh, David Vian uh, presented on, the, on his uh, presentation. Uh, and it was a study or, uh, on where would a bridge, a, a pedestrian bridge would, uh, would go, would, would be better to go. So we actually got to a very interesting and conclusive um, conclusion. Uh, so we have three possibilities for the, the bridge. And uh, I believe uh, yours were, were here, right? Yes. From here <coughs> to there. So we have kind of similar results, but since the met methodologies are so different, so we have we have close uh, close results, but not that close. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, the important thing is that we can uh, trace origins, have uh, different types of readings, like density readings, or, uh, uh, places where, uh, I'm going to say this again, this is a, a heavy simulation, so there are some <coughs> steps that are skipped because this would take uh, hours to, to actually calculate, but there are some steps so they are not colliding to, to they are colliding actually with the they are crossing the, the the blocks so this would take hours to calculate but uh, the, the readings are actually quite interesting if the input data that we put is uh, fairly you know uh, valid we can have some interesting type of results uh, okay, let's go back to, to explain the graphic user interface. Uh, so I talked about the agents, the blocks and how they react to the blocks and to the roads. So they follow the roads, they don't collide the blocks, that's the basic rule. Uh, extractors, reflexors, so positive places, negative places. Uh, this is actually uh, We'll, we'll have some kind of this is, uh, for example this place can be more positive than this place but there are both positive so they will we'll have different levels of positivity and negative but right now it's as is so there are uh, other functions that are not to the, the 
and uh, to the simulation environment and make readings of, uh, you know, uh, react as a, a 3D plane. Uh, I don't know what it's going to sorry. But uh, we can make readings on how the, the topographic uh, plans are. So uh, we can have, for example, uh, I'll make this rule right now. Like if there's a, a very steep place or a very plain place, so the steep place, if the agent goes up, it goes slower than it goes when it's, it's a plane. That's just an example. But, so this is still in in testing, so it's not really working right now, but it will be, I hope. Uh, so this is, the, I think this covers the, the, the whole uh, structure of the interface. So, uh, this is kind of all the, the facts, the, 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 the surface that we're taking. So this was actually the first simulation we've seen before. And it, it was also the first that, that I had made. So with uh, the previous tools is we, we talked about. So you've seen this already, I can see. This is kind of the same, but with a more colorful way and with uh, the neck the connections, the next is this is basically the same but with different parameters. So this was the first step towards a, a positive negative attraction with vector kind of thing. And uh, I suddenly started to have this kind of interesting results from almost doing nothing just using what these rules are and just the, the, the concepts that we talked about before. So with very simple steps, we could uh, very easily control all the rules. And what this actually, at this time, revealed what would be the, the main potential of this tool. And uh, it's visually very rich. Right now, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, at the time. But it could hopefully. This is basically the same. This is like the, the component the, the form finding component. So for the inside the box. This is actually able to the function that allowed me to, to make actual lines. The first one. So this is a very artsy speculation kind of form finding stuff that that we're able to do at that this time. So basically adults with agents trying to find their way to realize. So this is the actual I'm going to stick with. The first moment where we where I could import geometry. So I started with studying hypothetical grids. So I draw these grids and uh, see how the agents uh, follow or not follow, how they react to attractor deflector. So this was just the study for seeing if the whole system worked and that prepared for the next phase that would be a, a real grid like this. This was the first approach that we had we had in the analysis of it. So I tried to simulate on one side and the other side, then at the end both. So this, uh, these were actually these spots were, were actually traced on spot with the GPS with another system that uh, Isabel provided the uh, In this case, I ran a lot of simulations in order to get some decent results. Uh, and 
as I said before, they are always sub subject to interpretation. So, but uh, uh, okay, let's move on faster. Okay. So I will, at the time I went to a workshop me and uh, uh, to Paris, and um, and we started again revising all the concepts, all the basics, and starting writing everything from scratch. And these were the the, the, the results that we, we actually did. So this is interesting because they are actually negotiating or they, they can work with each other. This is a kind of self-organization kind of algorithm. So I, I felt like I needed to go back to do some generative art, some ways of representing. So this is uh, an important process, that uh, creation process that allows us to build vertically. So we have our edges in a plane. So we start making floors. So uh, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> I think. I hope. This is basically the same concept with my in interface, so I adapted that thing to the interface. Yeah, that's fast. It's kind of a power experiment. Or a vegetable, kind of. Matrix, kind of stuff. That's okay. This is kind of a, a, a try to make a stable structure, not a stable in a gravity, gravity way, but uh, so they negotiate with large and they, <coughs> much like the, 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 the balls were negotiating space, they are negotiating in a 3D manner. And lastly, this is a, a simulation I made uh, not long ago to revise all the concepts of uh, of the workshop and do another two later to get try to get, get the different results, better results, and try to identify where are the, the, the main problems, the tensions. The, so basically, the, the same concept with the more accurate tools. 